see that? Looks like I got a, got a O2 sensor that went out. <laughs> There's my pretty girl just hanging out. Just got back from a cruise, guys. Hey, everybody, this is Jason with uh, JW Class VW. And if you're new to the channel, that's my girl, my 1956 Old Wooden Ragtop Goose. And we did a 300 horsepower turbo build. In the last video, we talked about whether or not it'd be a good idea for you to full flow your oil system, kind of like some of the pros and cons, whether you really need to. And if you do full flow your system, some of the things you can do, some of the different types of stuff you can use. Yeah, we talked about different types of oil cooler setups, ones that you would use like on your torsion tube if you've got a swing axle setup. But also we talked about the different types of kits that are out there. Some of the different kits from Empy that comes with like an oil cooler. It also comes with a thermostat and, and your remote filter location type thing, but you're gonna have to pick up a, a bracket, some sort of way to affix that to your VW. Yeah, all kinds of different options out there, guys. But today, we're going to talk about fittings. How to route and secure your setup and then seal it up so that it's good to go. Yeah, I had all kinds of questions from you on more specifics on setting up a full flow system. And really, there's a lot of research that you need to do on that when it comes to your oil pump. Because when you start setting up beyond, I would say, a remote filter to an oil cooler. And depending on where you're putting that oil cooler, you're going to have, actually have to ump the size of your oil pump so that it's not working so hard. And all you're doing there is the gear set. You know, when they say like 26 millimeter or 32 millimeter, all you're doing is increasing the size of that gear set inside that oil pump. That's why it sticks out a little bit farther. Now, the oil pump that I'm running on Goose over here with my 300 horsepower turbo engine is an Autocraft one and a half stage oil pump that also siphons from the valve covers because so much oil is being pumped through that bad boy. So that's not what you're gonna be getting. Unless you wanna go crazy like me. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the board real quick just to talk about what we're going to be going to first, and that is the fittings. Fittings, one of the most important things I think when it comes to plumbing your VW for a full flow oil system or an oil system, fuel system, any kind of system. We're talking about oil lines and my dislike for these barbed fittings. You guys see these ones? That's an oil thermostat right there, but these barbed fittings. Let's go over to the bench and talk a little bit more about, yeah, what I like to use. All right, guys, so we're over at the bench, and let's take a look at bar fittings. And each one of these MP kits, like you buy an oil fitting kit out there, or not an oil, fill, fill, yeah, oil fitting kit, but if you buy a full flow kit from MP or, you know, pretty much anybody, they're going to come with some sort of barb fittings. They, they differ in size and kind of like variety, but they're all basically the same. Look like this. What happens is the... These little fittings on here, or the, the barbed portion of it, when you take your hose over top of it and put a clamp down on it, under a higher oil pressure, or if you got a high oil pressure system, it can blow that line off. And that can be a pretty scary deal. Pretty scary deal. So what do we do? What's the uh, solution to that? Well, the solution to that, and you guys have probably seen if you've been paying attention to my channel at all, is going with an AN fitting. Army, Navy fitting. These are things that are great, and we can run with a Dash 8 or like a half inch line, half inch on the inside. Dash eight is normally half inch. And uh, yeah, they tighten down nice with like a, I think it's a 37 degree, 30 to 37 degree uh, uh, on the actual fitting itself. So that becomes a lot more safer, secure, and used in all kinds of race applications, guys. This is the thermostat right here as well. Ooh. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, AN fittings. So if you've done any level of research whatsoever when it comes to AN fittings, let me move this a little bit, guys. There, that's a little bit better. So if you've done any level of research on AN fittings, you've seen that there's a wide variety of like, say, 45s. These are straights. There's 90s too, but I think I've used most of my 90s. But there's different types of fittings you can use out there when plumbing your system. Now, these are called hard 90s. And when you're doing like a full flow oil system or any kind of oil or fuel system, you want to kind of avoid hard 90 fittings because when you have a hard 90 in line in your system, what that does is it creates a restriction and makes your oil pump work harder as if like you have more line. So let's say you have like a 45 instead of a, well, a 45 degree type fitting versus like a hard 90 fitting. What ends up happening is like this is like a true flow so you get like just what you got here probably about uh, four inches or so of flow length or length of line when you introduce a hard 90 what you're introducing is more length, line length i don't know what the exact number is on that but it's like taking this and increasing your line probably like about a foot or two feet and all that does is make your pump work harder and we don't want that 
This is a banjo type AN fitting, which is really cool. I found this one when I was looking at different ways of bringing the full flow back into the case. You know, in my case, I cracked it at that one time and I had to have it welded up and came up with a different way of bringing it back into one of the oil relief valve locations, which was pretty cool. And this goes to a dash eight. So yeah, the variety in A and fittings is, is large, but what we run into and what you guys are gonna run into when it comes to selection and choice is, I like to use Evil Energy, which is uh, made in China. China, and why? Why did I go with Evil Energy, guys? Because cost. It costs a lot less. And I haven't ran into too many issues with it. I haven't ran into many problems with the Evil Energy line of fittings. I've used them on both my, my oil lines. Hold on a second. Oil lines oil lines and or fuel lines now on my fuel lines because i do an e85 it's got this teflon type tube in here which is not going to break down versus like this rubber inner liner if you run an e85 it's going to break down the interior of the actual hose so that's something to pay attention to if you guys plan on doing like a turbo e85 type setup but this dash eight line or dash six line is good for regular fuel or regular gas so that's cool one of the good things about AN fittings too is you can get these little uh, ones that are already tapped for a 1 8 type MPT fittings for if you're going to do any sensors, which this is a Haltech sensor that costs about 150 bucks that I burnt up. Yeah. Good job, Jay. Good job. <laughs> All right, guys, at that time of the video again to remind you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this content if you're enjoying it, which I hope you are. I hope you're enjoying the video. I hope you're learning some stuff about turbos and, and oil lines and fuel systems and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> now, back to the video. There's another example of a full flow fitting right there plus i think i have one on this over here yeah on my old oil cooler setup see that's a full flow right there into a dash 10 down to an 8 because it was a 10 an that i found i did use this hard over here but that's because i wanted to install this sensor this kicks the fan on right here at 180 degrees so yeah that's pretty cool i'm probably going to end up installing this back on goose is set up right now so that I can hardwire the fan to the battery so that way I don't have to hang out and wait every time with my key on in the ignition <laughs> waiting for the computer to tell the oil cooler to turn off all right guys now we talked about fittings a little bit let's go ahead and move into routing and securing your setup let's go back here and look underneath goose and see what she's got going on Hoorah wide angle view okay you guys see how i kind of use some uh wire ties here this is called self-supporting or supporting off your lines that you have running through and routing is like to keep the route away from your headers which i have a good air gap going on here plus i've got this line installed here when it comes to keeping everything nice and safe this has got that uh shoot that what is it it's the same kind of stuff they use on the blanket up here. That kind of high heat stuff. Also used like in firefighter outfits to keep the heat away from the line. You see that I also used these kind of like C-clamp or C-hose type uh, fittings along the, or, or clamps along the body itself to keep the lines out of the way. You can also use like zip ties if that's what you got, like those nylon straps. Anything is better than just letting things hang all willy-nilly up underneath your car. So the real point here when it comes to the way you secure your stuff underneath your, your VW, whether that's a bug, beetle, bus, square back, notch back, thing, <laughs> gear, is, is to keep it out of the way of stuff that's hot. Yeah, my hand's all nasty now. Stuff that's hot or stuff that's gonna tear your lines off or tear them apart or even too close to the road. That can become an issue as well, especially if you guys like to drag your VWs in the ground or in the grass with your air ride systems. <laughs> Another way to secure, securely route things is like this is the uh, 3 8 line that I use for my fuel line, but uh, you can do these different types of fittings to the uh, 37 degree for AN fittings. And I did that for all my fuel lines is how you route it tight to the body. And the hard line doesn't move anywhere once you got it clamped into place. It doesn't flex the same way as like one of the rubber lines would. Other things that are pretty cool when it comes to protecting your hose, I kind of already showed you this stuff right here. It's got that like uh, fiber mesh or it's not a fiber mesh. Dang it, I'm gonna forget about it. It's like a, 
Uh, it's high temp. They use these for like spark plugs too to protect them from high temperatures. But uh, you can also get this jacket right here. Let's take a look at this real quick. Real quick. Yeah, let me get this one okay. And it's pretty cool because it just folds over on itself. You cut it to length, folds over on itself, and it acts as a heat shield. See? Pretty sweet. Other things that are important to mention when it comes to routing oil lines, if you're passing through any kind of metal stuff, say you drill a hole in your firewall, or you've got something running through some tins, is to use grommets. Grommets are super important when it comes to vibrations, and these VWs vibrate quite a bit when it comes to the road. You get road noise or road vibration up through the metal, and then it'll cut right through those lines, fuel lines and or oil lines, and you don't want that to happen. So getting like a nice little kit like this, with an assortment of different grommets, is a great way to protect those lines whenever they're passing through metal stuff. So on your full flow system, when it comes to your oil pump and or your, um, your oil cooler like here, you're gonna have these fittings, these transition fittings, you know, like a 90 degree or, or uh, like right here. This is that uh, full flow 90 going into an AN fitting. But I use tape. And this is when I'm coming to number three, guys. The number three thing we're gonna talk about today. Seal it up. Seal it up. Talking about like sealing up your fittings. There's so many different, <laughs> such different things that people use out there. Uh, from uh, Teflon tape, the white stuff, you don't want to use that, guys. You want to use that PFET, or it's like resistant to fuel and oil type uh, tape. That's the only way to go. Or, <laughs> there's something special I want to use, and I'll show you guys right now. Yes, that's right. In the winter, winter chicken dinner for the best sealing type of compound that I found for fuel and or oil is that uh, Red Loctite. Yeah, buddy. And it's true. I may run into some issues when it comes to taking some things apart, but it also keeps things from leaking. And I have found time and time again that when it comes to heat and tape, you know that uh, PTFE tape, it's usually gonna leak. The only time I haven't had a leak is when I use the tape right here. That's some good stuff, man. And you can pick up that PTFE tape like in your plumbing department, in your, uh, you know, big box store, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. The uh, red Loctite is available all over the place. Yeah, buddy. And it's amazing. A little expensive for the big thing right here, but uh, it gets the job done. So guys, not talking a whole lot about a whole lot of different things today. Just some of the basics when it comes to fittings and what you should choose and pick. Now, the bar fittings, they can work. And I, I would say that they work fine like on a, on a lower PSI, lower pressure system when it comes to your oil. But uh, as you start to increase power and you get a pump that's putting out more oil pressure, you're gonna wanna move to the AN fittings. Now you can get the push on, there's still push on type or the time that I have, you have to make them and I use a, uh, an angle grinder, and I wanna give you this little tech tip right here, a little bit of information. Make sure you clean out your lines after using an angle grinder. Or you maybe kinda of clog them up with something so that all that debris doesn't get up in there, because let me tell you what, that debris will get into freaking everything, man. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I appreciate y'all, you guys. I appreciate all my new subscribers. The weather's getting nicer outside, which means more videos, more stuff to come. We're gonna be doing a five point, five part series on TurboTech. We're gonna talk TurboTech with uh, me, and we're gonna go ahead and bring Daryl on. Daryl, the guy that built the engine, guys, so it's gonna be pretty cool. Lots of good information. So see you guys soon. This is Jason from JW Classic VW, and I appreciate you. Get out in the garage, do some work. See you next time, guys. This is Jason. Come out.